Okay, well we are live. It took us a wait, we're not we're not that bad. We're only a couple minutes late. We just had a couple of audio issues that we wanted to fix, but we're we in the are, Brazilian time. Yeah, right? we're in Brazilian time. Exactly right. <laughs> we are here live with Vladimir Matoshenko, of course. He's fighting uh, on uh, January twenty sixth at UFC on FX six and he's facing Ryan Bader and uh, we're chilling at his house. His wife just got home, I've got my daughter here. It's it's a family affair right now. It's good. Well, yeah, yeah. It's so good. comfortable. And so if you guys have any questions you should definitely write in and we'll read them and you know try to incorporate you guys into our talk here and um, but first and foremost obviously we want to just talk about your upcoming event and we know that uh, it's you know been a little while you were at, you were out of the cage for a little while so what was it about Ryan Bader that made you feel like this was the right fight to come back for? Well, first of all, what are you talking about? While what's the while? <laughs> what you fought Gustafson in forty four is the while. No. <laughs> <laughs> just cool. Wow. Just went right, 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 right there. Yeah, no. Well, if I was to say it was No, if I was gossip, so right? yeah, I, was, I, I like to take some time off after a fight, loss, whatever. Yeah. Uh, fighting game, you, you can burn out sometimes. But after a few months, I, you know, I'm trying to get back in and uh, supposed to fight uh, Matt Hamill. Um, in get, September injured, right? September, yeah. uh, get injured September. Get injured. Nothing big. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are saying it was a a heel attendant, mm -hmm. which is could be pretty freaking uh, uh, hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, thank you. No, really thank, not, really uh, thankfully yeah. it was just a uh, just a calf muscle. Oh. It was a muscle, so I recovered literally in a month, and I just roll over and uh, start training right after that because I don't like to stay for too long for too nothing. I did it a few times, and it's very hard to come back. I want to stay in the shape, and and this time I'm I'm ready to go. And uh, well, yeah, 2000. Twelve. Actually, I didn't fight. It was That's kind of. What I'm it's saying. weird. It's me grief, and yet. It was <laughs> but it was so close because I fought on the end of the right 2011, the and uh, the, uh, you know, so fighting in the right? beginning. Was, was I right, or was? You <laughs> no, well, I'm glad to hear that it. You know, that's the thing because everything you read does say Achilles, Achilles, Achilles. And when you think about that, yeah, you know that that's yeah, sometimes an injury that people can't come back from. And uh, be honest with you, I didn't know what happened. Uh, I was kicking the pads, and uh, when I landed. I heard a pup, uh -huh. and I didn't know where I was. But I was in Santa Monica, two blocks away from the hospital. Mm -hmm. I went right into it, did an MRI and everything because, like, I didn't know, what, you know, how bad it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and with UFC and stuff, we have to report it right away and how bad it is and stuff like that. So I, you know, this time I was being responsible. Yeah. And so it, it, it tore or it just kind no, of? No, it was a tear of, uh, yeah, it was a tear of muscle. But muscles are kind of. You know, tend to heal themselves because they have blood supply. Okay, right. If you tear your tendon, then yeah, you probably need right. a surgery. And now, speaking of that, though, our good friend, your good friend Jared Hammond, he his hamstring tore, right? In that yeah, but the, in a way, his hamstring came off a bone. Oh, <laughs> that was hardcore. Oh, and I was I watching. You know, I haven't talked to him in a while. Is he, he's okay. He's okay now. He been actually sparring, start sparring last week, uh, and you know he's doing better. And, but there was a it was a bad injury, and yeah. I can't believe that he was continue fighting for you know for whole round after that. I mean. That was heartbreaking because I remember seeing. It was it. heartbreaking to me, and that's why, in a in a way, I put on hold my coaching career, kind of not a hold, but just like in a year or so, because I want to, you know, finish my career first. Otherwise, it just is too much for me. Yeah. Well, you you just brought the words "finish your career" up here, so so. Well, I didn't bring it up. You. Well, you know, but it came out of your mouth. You said "finish my career." So, how how much longer, you know, do you think you will you will, you will fight? Yeah, one of my uh, good friends told me once that uh, you know what the most constant, constant thing mm -hmm. in life is a change. Yes. So <laughs> everything's, yeah. everything's come to the end. Uh, but when I don't know. And right now I feel good. I feel great. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think this uh, you know my fight with Bader is gonna be a big indication of where I am. You know, if I can prove, I can go and honestly. With this situation right now, with MMA where it is right now, I want to keep going forever. Sometimes my body can say, <laughs> no, I don't want to wake up. <laughs> right, but I mean, you know, it's interesting because there are, there are a handful of guys in their late 30s, early 40s that are still doing it. It's just interesting because obviously the game evolves so much now and now it's crazy. You see guys like Rory McDonald, Michael McDonald, these young guys that are 20, nothing. And that are so good already, and you know, 
people wonder is it is it only a young man's game? I mean, you're certainly proving that it's not. Because do you feel that you have a lot of maybe I don't know if it's just cage knowledge and stuff that you have that these guys don't have, even if you know they're they're 15 years younger. Uh, first of all, yes, it is cage knowledge, but only because there was no cage knowledge before. It's a new sport, so only people know about it, all about it, just, you know, me, Randy, Dan Henderson, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and all those guys. Exactly. And plus, if you've been staying in the game for so long, not just with UFC or MMA, I've been doing sports since I was 10 years old kid, and I have education in health science and, uh, you know, and uh, physical education, so I know my body, it's my job, and and right now, and I talked to her earlier about it, MMA become not just a big uh, entertainment uh, field, but also a learning field for me. I can learn a lot of things from, you know, just watching it. Uh, before, was only a few guys available to watch and learn from. Right now, there's a lot of material and I'm learning every day. So I think that, you know, extend my uh, Time span in the you know in, uh, as as a fighter and also of course uh, organization and uh, level of uh, MMA promoters mm -hmm. I'll put it in that way becomes so you know much higher and to the level where it's NBA or NFL of the sports and now yeah all I have to do is train and fight really right. <laughs> when I when I have to used to have to fight for my paycheck exactly. <laughs> I'm like where's my paycheck <laughs> give it to me <laughs> well you told me a long time ago about some other things that you used to do let's just say Vlad used to be in the collections industry <laughs> no <Nah. laughs> um. well yeah for myself too like I still don't get paid for my one fight I get paid ten thousand dollars my yeah. paycheck bonds and never got it. Really? Really. From which one? Uh, uh, long time ago. Yeah, right? no, it was in San Francisco oh. or Auckland, whatever. And, and it totally devastated me because, you know, like right now I'm pretty sad. Yeah. But, you know, back then I was a single father. Sure, my sure. son was in the middle school and I'm like, where's my money? My and money, it just yeah. got... Yeah. Don't <laughs> so. get this bad. You, you said, all I'm going to say is look up a clip that we did with Vlad about his gun collection. Um, and that will let you know that this is not a man to cross. Um, so do you, have a, do you have fights left on your UFC contract though after, after Ryan? Yes, yeah. I have a few fights. But again, it's up to fans, yeah. up to UFC, up to me, and up to... How can I say? You, you cannot force somebody to fight. Right, That's the right, one thing that. you have to you have to really want to and able to do it. Right, right. Well, I should just let people know. <laughs> dogs and children, <laughs> dogs, children. Man, cats and dogs. It's you know, it's great. It's actually really fun just hanging out at, you at your place. Refresh. I may have to hit refresh, but we definitely want to take you guys' questions. Um, oh, see, listen to this. Jay Weddy said Vlad is so underrated. He's been one of my favorites for a long time. <laughs> Do you feel underrated? You know, I think at one point, I don't know if, if, if Dana said the words, you know, gatekeeper or something like that, but they certainly have, have put young fighters up, including, you know, John Jones, Gustafson, these guys. They put, they put these guys up against you as a real test. I mean, do you, does that, is that something that you wear as a badge of honor? Like, look, I'm a real tough guy that they have to prove that they can, they can trade with, or does that, you know, bother you at all? Uh... Yes and no. Lately, <laughs> well, they call me first of all underrated because again I'm old school. I can I have a hard time to keep up with the technology like yeah. you guys. Big help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but another thing is like, you know, I'm a true person, and if a gatekeeper sticks with me, oh well. Yeah, my management uh, doesn't like it. They're like, right. no, no, you have to be a not gatekeeper. I'm like, well, people call me gender. <laughs> it's pretty close to freaking <laughs> gatekeeper. <laughs> That's what the genders do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you go like, well, who is that? You stay with the broom. I'm like, <laughs> but the thing about to me, in a way, and I, and I and I feel you what you're saying, but like to me, you got what you deserve, and then put it away. If if I'll be like, yeah. Maybe I come to the game a little bit too late, too early, and, and, and if you all be like, right now I'll be 27 when I started, yeah, well, things will be I'll be John sure. Jones, exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, right now I'm a little bit too late, but I'm still rolling and I'm, I'm feeling great, and uh, uh, if somebody, you know, gatekeeper, it's actually not that bad. No, it's not, 
and the thing about it is, you, what is your your record is twenty six and six? Yeah. Come on. I mean, most people live to even the fact that you even have that many fights. Okay, is just in and of itself awesome. But the fact that you won twenty six and only <laughs> lost like that's pretty badass. Like, and that, and that's what I'm saying. I think that's what this person means by underrated because I don't think people recognize that. And because I think maybe because you are more humble and you're you're just you know not a guy that's gonna yeah get out there and be like look how awesome I am. That's not your that's not your your mo. I, people maybe don't recognize that back, but this is a true badass. That we're sitting with. <laughs> well, six and six. I mean, really. Um, Okay, uh, 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 and people, you know, are, are just thinking that um, here's some person. Kevin's MMA Max D says Bader versus Matushenko, a perfect matchup. I do want to ask you about that because um, stylistically, you know, Ryan is a terrific wrestler. You have a great wrestling his- history. This guy's a Belarusian champ, and uh, you, you know, that that was your thing for so long. You guys can both throw some serious power. Do you, do you see this as a matchup of, of two similar type of guys? And if so, how do you beat yourself? <laughs> it's not about beating yourself. It's about, uh, first of all, yeah, we're stylistically pretty close, but, you know, but also, he been, uh, he's a wrestler, I'm a wrestler. He was working his strikes. He had a few knockouts. <clears throat> he did the... Uh, uh, Knock off you guys. Early, well, early on, he had a lot of knockouts, and then he had a little bit of a bump in the road after. Exactly, you have to learn those things. Yeah. Same yeah. am I. You know, I knocked out the. <coughs> ah, come on, who did I knock out in the Canada? Oh, and oh, up in oh, at, at one twenty nine on Leota's card. Yeah, you knocked out Jason Brills. Jason Brills and uh, so actually he did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so did well, but uh, I lost to the. Uh, Gustafsson, yeah, he lost yeah. to Leota Machida, right, who can right, play right. with the game and uh, uh, use the reach. So yeah. we're kind of like in the same way, we're trying to get uh, up to that and uh, against each other. We can try, it's a, it's, it's a best uh, uh, testing ground. Mm-hmm. If you have certain weapons, it's like that's what going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's a perfect because uh, none of us have a big reach advantage or nothing. Like right, right now, what you guys are pretty close. Uh, exactly. Right, so right. Uh, I, I think it's a good. It's a good matchup. Nice. Well, you brought up a name um, from your past, Leoto Machida. I saw Leoto yesterday. I was down at Black House. People probably don't realize that you guys used to train together, training partners and stuff. To me, that 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 is just uh, really cool. What what was that like? How long ago was that? How did you and Leoto even come to to be friends? Well, I think I, t- I trained with Leota for a few years, I think, and uh, maybe five years ago, seven years ago, and <clears throat> he came to Los Angeles and he was a tra- you know training with us. He, he wanted to pick up wrestling, and I think he underestimated himself. He's a great wrestler, and I have a hard time to wrestle with him, and uh, and he's got a good skills right now, and I learned from him distance control and stuff like that, and hopefully I can use it and utilize and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we, against the, yeah, you know, no. Well, I hope so. And we were saying too off camera. Folks, I'm not gonna want to take too much. You no, know? no. And part of the reason Leoto, you know, is is like you're saying a good wrestler, which maybe he doesn't even appreciate, is because he keeps that low center of gravity. And he's maybe he's saying bagging. Yeah. You know, saying <laughs> bagging on the golf. Like, yeah, I, I can't wrestle. I can't. Damn. Um, what can't you do, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so people are saying that you're gonna win by KO. Um, oh, Juice Boat wants us to send a hello to the UK and not Phoenix. What's up, not Phoenix? MMA. <laughs> um, here's a here's a question. Speaking of wrestlers, Jones and Cormier. What do you think of that fight? I know you haven't fought Daniel Cormier, but I uh, think it's a good fight. But I don't know what Cormier make that weight. <laughs> I know him actually pretty long time. I know him from Colby College in Kansas. Yeah, and. Uh, even then, he was a big guy. Yeah. He's very explosive, a cool guy. I, lo- I like him a lot. Uh, really but, but as a weight-wise, I don't know. But the, but Jones can, you know, he, he can gain weight. Yeah. But I don't know if it's is interesting. I don't think to, John is interested in going up to fight Daniel. I think the whole point. At least I mean, not yet. Well, Unless they pay him billions of dollars. Well, right. But what's interesting about that too, to me, is that yeah, Daniel. Everybody keep we we were joking about. We worked together on the on the um, on fuel when when JDS and King were fighting. And we all just joke on Daniel, like, oh, you're small. Well, you know, you're small for a heavyweight. I mean, he, you know, we kind of laughs about that. But you're right, he's, he's stocky. But then you think, oh, he's so fast and explosive already. What would happen if he was at 205? Like, he might be ridiculous. Well, then you have to make decisions and make Or he it. might not have the power, though, right? I don't but know. you can see a lot of uh, guys who's heavy get weighed down. But I think, uh, you know, Cormier is a naturally... 
big guy because yeah. I saw I saw when he was 18. Oh, he, he was, was he was a big. He was <laughs> so when right. somebody's 18 is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's a question here. Uh, do you think that the fight with Ryan would go three rounds? Uh, it's a big possibility. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, both of us in a good shape. He's in good shape. Mm -hmm. He can stand it for so long, and none of us have, like I said, our game is the very same as far as striking and uh, and submission and stuff. So that's that's a big possibility. Yeah, it is. All right, interesting. Uh, better for the fans, right? So, and of course, yeah, are you going to be a refill? <laughs> Wade is just sneaking around and touched my glass of water. I'm like, damn, I'm not on camera, good but... service. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody, Blaze Hart said, Vladdy, what's more fun, cleaning floors or cleaning clocks? <laughs> but, um, um, but, you know, it is actually fun, the, the whole Vlad the Janitor nickname. And I don't know if we've talked about it before, but, you know, there's always newcomers here. Who, who gave you that name? Because you told me before, and it's actually kind of a fun story. Yeah, it's a fun story. It was, Wade uh... photobombing <laughs> us in the background. <laughs> Video bomb. Yeah. It was a back in the Russia when I was a little kid, not a little kid, I was 18 years yeah. old and uh, you know, I think it was a, one of the biggest tournaments in the uh, pre-qualifying for Olympics in Barcelona and you know, I just, they released me out of military and I'm like, yeah, I have to get out of here. <laughs> oh. and, I was, and I was literally like, uh, US team trains, then France team, whatever, they train, and, you know, you have like 40 minutes to okay. lose weight and stuff, sure. and then sweat comes out, and before I train, I, I like to clean, I have OCDs, <laughs> sorry. Because <laughs> I, can, I can really cure No, you. seriously, yeah. I do have OCD, I clean like everything, like even like sometimes in the ring, I mean on the cage or ring, I go there and just pick something up and just throw it away. That is awesome. But anyways, that's what I did, yeah. and, uh, and the guys are, uh, including uh, Dave Schultz and yeah. uh, Mark Coleman. Right. And Mark, Mark Coleman, Coleman was right. there and 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 I, and I wrestled I, th I think I wrestled uh, Roy Salger and uh, and uh, Kevin Jackson who was Olympic coach for many years and then he won Olympics that okay. year in Barcelona. Yeah. And I just next day I went there, beat all of them up. And right. well, but didn't, well, didn't they say something like, "You look at that guy's not any good. He's just no." But the coaches were making fun of him right. because, like, you guys freaking world champions and this, sure, and you sure. lost to the Jenner. Yeah. You, he, <laughs> he just signed up yesterday. He was just cleaning ass. He just <laughs> signed up. I love that. It's good and it's stuck. And also another thing that you guys should look for. We did some fun stuff. Um, we we called him janitor tips. And we had some fun stuff with you, and, and this is, it's kind of like that, the whole yeah, thing, floors are cool cleaning clocks. Um, some fun stuff, I had to Yeah, see. but anyways, if you guys need any tips, like real ones, and like, I, I, I do clean pretty good. <laughs> he knows how to get blood out of stuff, right? <laughs> Seriously. Um, no, honestly, honestly, you want to come to my house, because, you know, we, <laughs> it's, not, it's not dirty. Let me just clarify. My house isn't dirty. It's just a lot of disorganized. stuff. Disorganized. Yes, disorganized. That's and why I have, I have a constant battle with my wife. <laughs> well, we have, an, we have an historic house. So they back in the day, they didn't build... They didn't build I'm like, come on. How many purses do you have? How many lotions and other stuff? Lotions? <laughs> lotions. No, look at Vlad. Come on. Little bags. Come I'm like, on. what is it? I feel you, Vlad. I feel silky, you. Silky smooth because of the No, lotion. no. She got like... Uh, come on. Like those two rooms? Like two offices. Uh, what offices? Well, Shoes and clothes, like, yeah. like, come on. You know, Stella is, <laughs> Stella is a bright woman, and I, feel, I know what she's. No, listen, our, our house. Our house was old. It doesn't have a lot of closet space because it's back always in the day, excuses. Oh, always excuses. Back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, people didn't have as much stuff. And granted, we Americans are materialists. We got a lot of stuff, yeah. so we don't. That's have what they call them now. Herders. <laughs> oh my God! I'm not a hoarder. Herders. God! Yeah. Wow! It's time to wrap it up. No. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um. Somebody's saying that they wouldn't consider you a gatekeeper. They're just saying you're underrated because of the lack of exposure in the UFC. That that that's interesting. I mean, you know, we we, we sort of joke about it, but you know, the the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I mean, I was just working with Chell earlier today. Chell's a really cool guy, but Chell makes a stand for what he Heck wants yeah. and he asks for it. So, do you ever feel, in hindsight, that maybe you should have been more vocal requesting this? Yes, I do. Fight? Like I told earlier, I'm yeah. from, uh, old school, but in a way, I like to be. In the shade. That's your thing. <laughs> it's my comf comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. Some people wants to be rich and famous. I just want to be rich. Nice. <laughs> Boom. Boom. 
and he's got, like I said, the guns to protect that. that <laughs> thing. Um, what's your favorite drink? Valencia J wants to know what's your favorite drink. The water would come handy for. <laughs> She doesn't mean during camp. She means like for real. When when you're when when you're not training, when you're getting loose, when you're out, you know. Any drinks, so like beer, like vodka, like wine. I don't like mixed drinks. No. Because then I don't know how much I drink. Right. <laughs> well, I like shot of vodka. No, shot of vodka. No. I don't know. You have a margarita. I don't know how much margarita. Yeah. There. <laughs> so I'm a yeah. I'm a yeah. I'm control freak. Yeah. I'm an OCD. Yeah. <laughs> I have a shot of vodka, a shot of vodka. And again, I'm referring to some other things we've done, but we have, we have a great interview that we did with Vlad. The first time we met you at a Russian restaurant, and uh, they started our meal off with five shots of vodka or something like that. That was one of the best lunches I've ever had. <laughs> that actually was really fun that day. So I, I um, you we guys go back after camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to go back to back to track. Yeah, deer. we'll do, we'll do. Um, do you know? Do you know what the odds are? MMA dogs is asking. I don't know if you. No, I'm not looking. I'm no. I'm not a gambler. I'm not the fan. No. I'm a. I'm a. You know, student of the game. I'm a student of the game. I'm a participant. Right, I'm, a, right. I'm a fighter, and you don't worry about that. Stuff. If I don't fight myself, I look at it as a learning experience. I, yeah. You know, that's about it. Right. This person, uh, Pete Worth, is saying, "Nice hat as always, Vladdy, a true gentleman." <laughs> How many hats do you have? No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, but Stella's got purses coming out of the yeah. house, my hat collection is totally... Well, my hat's not thrown around in a, in a room here. You just only have one hat, one hat at a time in the house, and it's everything's in... <laughs> my stuff's not junk. Stuff oh. <laughs> hey, listen, so do you, do you have... My hats don't make mess. <laughs> your hat, okay. Whatever. Um, do, you, do you have a favorite fight, one of your fights that... Um, that you, you know, remember feeling your best out or, you know, that you just, everything fired on all cylinders. One fight that just stands out as your favorite? Well, it depends. It uh, depends on the fights you learn from or it depends on the fight you feel as a winner. Of course, my fight against the Brills was yep. great. And not just because 20-second knockout, but it was a huge amount of people there. If you guys don't remember, that was at UFC 129 when Jake Shields fought... Uh, uh, GSP, and that was in the stadium. It was 55,000 people. 55,000 people. It it's it's a huge. It I never see so many people. That like. must have, What was that ring walk like? <laughs> what was that like? Yeah, it was a, it was, it was, a, it was a great. It's a, and, a, and a, so, uh, so many fans, yeah. so many uh, lights or whatever. Yeah, can you take in that moment? Like when you're, when you're doing your ring walk, I don't know if you're. I even took a picture from, I think, from Sport Illustrated, and yeah. I, I, I posted it, you know, put on the picture on the wall because, yeah. so, you know, it's huge. It was amazing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, f from the fight fight, mm -hmm. again, like, could be my best fight with the Gustafson. I learned how to deal with it. <laughs> With the long hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it depends. Like you're learning and you know dealing with stuff, but you know I think a, you know a fight in the Canada and a, that time in Toronto was a, the greatest because it not just showed myself as a fighter, but also where MMA got to to that point. Mm -hmm. that to me, it was like yeah, now we now we're in business. You know, except I'm freaking getting too old, but no, you're not, <laughs> in a way, no. I'm like getting too. I'm like jealous. I'm like you, you guys. Suck. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I remember. Where like, were you were before? When I, <laughs> ten years ago. Where were you? Son of a god! If I was only seven years younger. No, but I, I agree with you because it it was truly. You know, the word is overused now, but that was truly an epic night. I mean, it was just for people who were in the building, and you look around, you're like, oh my god. I mean, it was that was amazing. Um, you, you mentioned Gustafson. He didn't win that fight, but how good do you think he is? Obviously, he must be the best on the planet if he can beat you, but I mean, how good do you think Gustafsson is? Because he's a name that everybody uh, has put a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of support behind, and he's a name that everybody says, future champ, future champ. Do you see it that way? Well, to be a future champ, again, I'm like a very, uh, not sarcastic, but I'm a <laughs> skeptical, yeah, <laughs> always. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but... I think he's got a bad, you know, good chance, uh, and he's good matchup against John Jones. Yeah. They both tall, they both good striking, and um, I think it's going to be a great fight. It's uh, one of the fights I want to see. Yeah, and the thing is too, it's funny, you know, I talked to John about it. People say, oh, well, Gustafson has a great chance with John because he can just neutralize the reach advantage. And John's like, yeah, I kind of have a couple of skills, so, <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't just poke people. <laughs> it's not just because I have exactly, arms, and I know. think uh, you know John Jones, he can use skills. his wrestling skills too and stuff like that. Yeah. But Gustafson, he's good on the ground and he's learning too. And with those people, it's not just uh, you, you guys should understand. It's like this game. It's not just like oh, 
this person got this, this person got this. Yeah. You have to realize that every person, every day, sometimes twice a day, three times a day, learning and getting better. Mm -hmm. So calculated by 365 a year, in the, you know, that's how get better they are. And that's why you have to keep up with the game and, uh, and you cannot say, Gustafson, yeah, a year ago it was like this, now he's maybe totally different, per not different, but, but much better. That much more so, and it depends who evolves faster and better, that's, that's the winner. Right. Do you, speaking of evolving, um, who'd you train with this camp? Did you, did you go back to the regular crew? Did you mix it up a little bit? Uh, go back to regular crew, mix up a little bit, you know, same thing. There's a few guys I want to mention, uh, Gabriel, uh, 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 Gabriel Lima, mm -hmm. he's, a, uh, he's a good partner of mine. Uh, Anthony Hardonk still, mm -hmm. yeah. Oliver, I ah, forgot his last name. <laughs> Oliver the man, Oliver. Oliver the man. The guys, Oliver. you know, the, the, yeah. the those guys who you hate at the moment yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for the last oh past God. week. I'm like, right. guys, I want to kill him. Yeah. And you to hit him as hard as you can, just so you kind of <laughs> slow down on you. And but you know, after you're done, you kind of like, oh, you give a hug. I like, I'm know. sorry. And like, yeah. yeah. But like, that's the that's the hardest. I wouldn't want to train with you. I would. I've seen you train and stuff. I think I would. It's not just me. I think everybody's hating I've seen any you any fighter Virgil. when you. Go, Oh, Virgil Zwicker was training with you guys, and that poor guy was just like, "Damn!" <laughs> he, by the end of that thing, I mean, he was so he he was so ex excited and psyched about it. But like, you guys work him. Work yeah. Him. Well, you know, yeah, you have to you have yeah. to get beat up before a fight, yeah. and it comes to the point where you know, especially again for me, I learned how to not to get hurt and pick the opponents, but in a way. They're strong, they know what they're doing, they're pushing you, but without hurting each yeah, other. Right, right. But they still have to be danger, presence of real fight, yeah. otherwise it's, you're not learning anything. But it's, I think it's hardest part, it's, it's harder than fighting. Right, right, right. <laughs> sure. Well, right now when we showed up today, you look so fit and trim and everything. How's your weight? How's your weight? How good are you at, at cutting weight? Obviously you've been doing this for a really long time. But um, look at that. It's folks. gone. Dang. It's amazing <laughs> to me. I mean, it's it's because I, you know, not that you let yourself go, but you know, you're always close to weight. But I mean, I've seen you at times, and when you're not fighting, and yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes you, know, yeah, sometimes yeah, you yeah, like yeah, to eat them, kicking back a little bit. Is it is it something though that you've you know really perfected to a science at this point? Well, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you have a hard time, and the hard hard uh, having hard time is a. It's no pain good. It's right, no right, good. Right. Yeah. So you're not the guy in the sauna losing 18 pounds, that, you know. No, but I'm a guy in the sauna losing 10, 8, 7, yeah. maybe hopefully five. Well, that's right. <laughs> seven, eight, five. That doesn't. That doesn't sound. Yeah. Bad. No, I want to be that guy, but you still have to lose some, and uh, right. you know. <coughs> yeah. Well, no, I just. Uh, I, and so somebody's asking here, how do you? Mark Merp is asking, how did you prepare for Bader's right hand? I mean, obviously, <coughs> he, he he knocks people out with that, so. Well, yeah, but the uh, right hand is a uh, two inches, maybe. Yeah, yeah. If you stay out or you stay in, right. he's gonna miss it. So as long as you're moving around and you move at a point at a time where you, you know, when he throws that punch, I mean, it's pretty obvious he does it. You think he telegraphs? He telegraphs. It's pretty powerful. I yeah, know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, that's that's the point. You can't just stand there and cover yourself up. Maybe yeah, sometimes yeah. you can, but yeah, you know, sometimes those things hurt. Like I broke my nose like that. I it I, I blocked it. You know, I was like, <laughs> I blocked. Do you ever get surgery on that after you're done? Maybe I will because not just because of looks. You can't breathe, probably, right? I can't breathe right now, but when I sleep down, uh -huh. I can like I have a hard time. You know, I can sleep on the side. Right. So right. It, you know, but I want to fix it before. No, well, that, I'm what would done. Be Otherwise, <laughs> like, what's the That's point? Stupid. But the thing is, like, yeah, I blocked it. Yeah, yeah. Blocked everything. You know what I supposed to, but went through anyways. <laughs> so I think the biggest, you know, and it's a new, not new, maybe. Old Chinese people yeah. did it, or Japanese, but you can see John Jones and uh, uh, Anderson Silva, mm -hmm. they don't get hit. No, no. Not the other, they just move they around. Just, right, just, right. <clears throat> yeah, so avoiding those punches, it's, uh, and you know, with the beta too, you know, if you move in, move out, right. you know, get hit, that's, that's a, it's a good thing. And you're, and you're not critical of Ryan's movement, but you feel like he maybe stays in the way of punches a little too often. Yes. For your liking, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. <laughs> but we were talking about Lyoto, and 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 part of the problem may have been that Ryan didn't move on angles. Yes, but again, 
that's the gray line or fine line sure. between you know, keep your fans happy, uh, keep your data yeah. wife happy, yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, right. keep your wife happy, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or your mom. Yeah, yeah. So I was just going to make a really bad. Not even go there about, so yeah, yeah. you want to keep your wife happy, you stay yeah. away. You know, you want a fans yeah, yeah, happy, you put your face in there. That's right. Hit me, you know. Well, that brings up my next question: Is who you know? I just was watching, watching. Sorry, like interrupt you, but watching, yeah. watching the fight. Uh, Watching my car today, yeah, right? And, yeah. And, you know they have videos and stuff, and yeah. I was watching Rocky movies when you fight the Tommy. The yeah, Tommy Gun. And they just go like, bah, bah, and bah. I'm right, like, right. why? <laughs> Can you just keep your hands up, <laughs> or just take a step back? <laughs> Don't get hit, <laughs> like you know. What I mean? But some guys like it, and you know, and you know. Ain't that bad? Ain't that bad? <laughs> Copy, man. But it's funny. But you can see that the 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 top guys. I'm not looking the most. Famous, uh, most the uh, uh, fans like it. I mean, right. uh, again, I'm not the fan, right? I'm a professional fighter and also coach. So for for me, for stem, you know, from that standpoint, is uh, yeah, don't get hit. Right. If you can avoid that, you're a fine. You, 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 you're right. a cool guy. Right. Right. And again, for self defense too. Sure. When somebody gets in your house, what are you gonna do? Like, yeah. come on! Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, whoa, whoa, right. pop! Right, right, right. right. So That's you know. So <laughs> you know, you bring up a, a question for me though. I mean, you only have six losses. Oh, did did anybody really hurt you in those? I'm trying to remember. I know John had you in the crucifix, and that wasn't good. But uh, I don't know who who you know who who's hurt you the most, or or, or, or which defeat you felt like the most disappointed at. No, as far as you mean physically. Yeah, either way, physically, emotionally. I never get like really actually get hurt in the right, fights. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> I get most of the time I get hurt in training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the psychic yeah. part. Oh. When you don't get paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, oh, it's fine, but you don't get paid yeah, for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, not really. I didn't get hurt. Like, and you know, quick flash knockouts. Yeah. You don't feel nothing. But does that just really that's the make thing you, you don't agree that it's, I mean is that like infuriating when you go back and you look at the tape and do you like every time that you've been called knocked out I mean do you believe you really were no <laughs> but that's the thing that's the thing especially yeah. if it's so fast like yeah. you just kind of go whoop and you wake up like, right and a lot right. of times when you knocked out and I saw my you know Last fight, yeah. you knock out, but you hit the ground. You woke up. You woke up. <laughs> <laughs> who was That's roughing what with you and Alexander? Who was who was roughing? Oh, uh, I, I forgot. A son of a no! I'm kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, but you're out. You're obviously out. You fall. You can see a lot well, of times for the guys. You you fall down. You can tell boom. They're out. Right. Then, you, the then you woke up. Right. And you know what that happens. And a lot of guys win by that time when it fall down and they woke up, like. Uh, uh, Frank Mir and uh -huh. uh, Nigera. Yeah, yeah. I was in the same uh, locker room. Right. Oh, really? Frank Mir said he was out. Totally out. He fell down. Nigera jumped on the top of him. He started waking up and just pulled the thing out. Right. <laughs> he just pulled his out, out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark Munoz was telling us that time. I don't know if it was with Okami or what. That he, yeah, he kind of got a took a huge knee. Uh, I guess it wasn't Houston. I'm trying to remember. Kendall Grove. Yeah, Kendall Grove. He took a huge knee, just ate it, and he's like, I was totally out. And then he said, but somehow instinct kicked in. I woke up in a single leg, and I was like, cool, you know. And then he, and then he, yeah. you know, went from there. But um, yeah, I you know. I feel, I feel bad for you guys because I know how much you go through, and you know, for for somebody who, you know, on the other side of your fight, Jason Brills, this is a guy who put in just as much time as you did. Fight ends for him in 20 seconds on the wrong side. You know, I, I always, I always feel bad for those guys where it ends so fast. Is it frustrating? Well, no, it's not frustrating. Somebody have to win, somebody have to lose. You're such a machine. <laughs> I'm not a machine. Is a machine. I'm very pragmatic and uh, cynical, Jeez. cynical person. No, I mean, I'm a, listen, we're both Capricorns, so I feel you on the pragmatism thing, but my goodness, I mean, like, what are you made of now? Um, <laughs> hey, yeah, here's a question. Uh, Ace Coco is asking, would you like to fight Matt Hamill? You were scheduled to. That didn't happen. Um, so yes, I would love to fight, and I'm uh, still, like, regretting I didn't fight. Like, oh. you know, it's... Were you, were you? I'm like very sorry, and you know, my wife told me that no, just turn the page, just yeah, move yeah, on. I'm yeah. like, I have a hard time to move on. <laughs> What's would be hilarious good too? I should tell people this is to me is hilarious because we know that we are sitting here with a stone. Uh, 
Vlad is married to this super hot Brazilian chick who we know is all about passion and feeling things. So to me, it must be hilarious what goes on here between the two of you with your with your arguments over her stuff and everything. I can just see you're getting all excited and you're just like, move your stuff. Um, <laughs> now, uh, what do you think about making MMA legal in New York State? You think that's going to happen? Is that something you'd like to see? Because, you know, right now, New York, State, New York State is a holdout. And that, oh, you, yeah, I don't understand you know, what talking about the the hell they... Square Garden in November, how amazing it would be to have a fight there. It's one of those things like you can't explain and understand why they don't do it. Like it's, it's a, a union <laughs> thing, and maybe you would be the perfect man to speak to the union delegates. <laughs> I don't have a few guys in the union, and actually yeah. in Chicago, my best friend, he's in the union. Yeah. He's a uh, you know, he's gonna be in my corner. Oh really? He married Irish girl, and uh, yeah, and they into but. Come on. I know. It's like, amazing to me. It's, it's not. not uh, it's crazy. I, yeah. Well, we're going to go just for a couple more minutes here. But um, tomorrow night, we, we, J.J. Smith is asking, um, Michael Bisping is taking on Vitor Belfort. Who do you think has got to go on that one? Because that, that to me is a, is a, you could argue that one either way. Again, it's a really good matchup. And I, I look at those things like the matchup's getting better and better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a going to be a great fight again. I think so a, too. Yeah. You know, because we were, you know, we were talking about that today. Uh, today, a few months like you can make the argument that Vitor could come right out and crush him fast. Vitor holds a record for the most first round finishes in the UFC, and he's got like 15 first round knockouts, you know, all told. But if the fight goes past maybe two rounds, that favors Bisping, and Bisping is elusive, and yeah, you could really. Yeah, it's. A <clears throat> But you don't bet. I'm not. Pre- yeah, I don't bet. <laughs> I don't project. I want to see a fight and learn from it. I don't know who this is. Om. F- I don't know if that Om F F G. What it stands for anything. But it says, do you think the UFC will go to East Europe, uh, like Russia and Belarus? You know, I know Sweden. What you know, they went to Scandinavia, and there's talk of them going there again. Actually, maybe that you'd be perfect person to ask about this. Is there a fan base really there yet? For the fan be? base is uh, great. Obviously, with with Fedor and stuff like you know, we know not that. just Fedor. Like I think fan base is uh, getting bigger and bigger. Even people like just they want to buy even clothes, so, tap out yeah, UFC, yeah. whatever. They just they keep asking me. I think it's a matter of a uh, government and negotiation with you know with uh, with those things. I think Russia will be much easier. Belarus, I don't know. <laughs> How would you feel though to fight over there? I mean, obviously you would be the you would be the poster, but they bring you and and uh, Habib Nurmagomed. Nur- shoot. I was practicing this all day because he's fighting to work tomorrow. Nurma, no, Nurma Gomadov. Nurma Gomadov, Gomadov. the eagle. But, um, he, you know, he's Russian. He trains out of AKA. Yeah. I mean, how, I, I would imagine that would be pretty awesome for you to be able to fight. No, it would be pretty near, awesome near too, home. but, you know, but my home right now is here. Yeah. I yeah. go home, you know, back in the home, home. It's kind of like... But do they recognize you? I mean, I know it's no, not yeah, but, 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 but like it's, it's, com- it's I'll tell you, like California right here, yeah. maybe Vegas, yeah. most comfortable place in the world. Yeah. <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Especially yeah. Vegas to fight, I like it there because you go there, you stay in a hotel, yeah. you walk, you don't go outside, you don't yeah. drive anywhere. Uh, in other countries, still kind of it's it's a work. Yeah, uh, I think UFC, you know, that way spoiled me in a way. <laughs> <laughs> You're being softy. Yeah, I'm softy. So, uh, Fruity McGee says you don't look 42 years old. He says you look younger, so a good 41 and a half. Oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> 40 and a <laughs> half. Um, wow. um, all right, well, so here, I, you know, you know, Vlad, you know, I'll just, we're going to, listen, folks, even when we turn this camera off, you know, this, this ridiculousness is going to continue. Um, on the flip side of what I asked you before, I, well, I, this one said the most fun fight, and I don't know if that's the same thing as what was your most satisfying, because you said Jason Brills was, but like, was that fun, or was it, or was there one time when you got to, yeah, like, fight in a cool city that you just had more fun at the whole event? The fight itself, if you can put yourself in the position when you, before the fight, you enter the cage yeah. and you say, well, that's my home. Yeah. That's, let's have some fun. You keep telling yourself, that's the fun part of it. Like, and you, you know, lately, my latest fights, that's how I go to. Yeah. I'm going to have fun. Good. It doesn't matter what, like it's your home. I feel more comfortable in the cage than anywhere else mm-hmm. because there's people like Leland and stuff and when I close the cage I'm like thanks God <laughs> do, you, do you hear your corner during the fight or do you only process what they're saying between rounds sometimes I, I learn it too but in a way like I almost can hear what they're saying and I'm not even hearing it but like 
I know what they're saying yeah. because I kind of talk to myself too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and because I'm coach myself too, yeah, I coach fighters. So in a way, like I know what it is. But sometimes when it comes to very technical fights, mm -hmm. then it's yeah. But so far, very technical fights was against John Jones and Gustafson when it was so quick. Yeah. I can't do anything about it. But those things were very technical. Otherwise, when you just keep going and going and doing, you know. But yeah. And are you critical of yourself? Like, do you do you, do you go home afterwards and watch the watch the fight and you know really break down what you did, or or, or once it's done, do you just not not look at it? No, definitely you learn from yeah. the experience. If you don't, I won't be here right now. Right. That's another thing from your. Uh, everybody's asking how you manage to be so old and keep fighting, <coughs> which is I don't think I'm old. Right. You're not old. <laughs> but that's the one of the points. If you keep learning from your mistakes and you can say, yeah, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I can learn from that, mm -hmm. then you keep going. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you say, no, I'm good, I, I am right now, then you're done. <laughs> done yeah. I'm, well, I'm very, I'm very critical of my own work, so uh, I, I feel you on that. Um, well, you're Capricorn, you shouldn't. Exactly. No, it's hard <laughs> because most of the people today are being lovely on these comments, but every now and then somebody says something and you're just like, yeah. Well, most of it's ridiculous, but every now and then they say something, and then you're like, "Really? Like, is it? Was it really that bad? You know, or whatever?" Like, then you start to second guess yourself, and that just makes me uh, that just makes me mad. No, but, you're the best. Oh, you're, no, I can see anybody. Thanks, buddy. Well, you're you're awesome. So, um, well, I think uh, somebody wants me to pronounce some Russian. I can't. I can't do that. But. Um, Let's see. I guess that's about. <laughs> no, I heard I saw about. Oh wait, yeah, oh, was, there, was there a good one? I don't know. Yeah, let me tell me. You tell me which one. Which Karim? How to pronounce? Habib Abdulamanovich. Habib. Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov. But see, we were told that it was Nurmagomedov. No, but it's in the Russian, like but I say. Uh, yeah. Habib Abdulamanovich Nurmagomedov. So you can't even say it. <laughs> no, it. That's tough. That is tough. Well, anyway, listen. Oh, did you? Did you like uh, Pokryak? Yeah. He, he's a tough guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy and actually we uh, hang out together a lot yeah. and uh, before a few fights, I forgot which fights, but we always, because he's from Europe, he uh -huh. comes out and he doesn't have anybody in the camp. We train right. together before fights, so right. we're losing weight and stuff like he's that. He's Croatian. Yeah. yeah. No, he's a cool guy and yeah. Nice. And totally and nice, nice, <coughs> nice, nice. That's good. Awesome, awesome. Well, Vlad, it's been a pleasure, and you, you head out to uh, Chicago on Tuesday, you said, right? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be cold. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I hate to tell you. I'm, I always think when I'm not going to be outside running around. I'm going to be like freaking uh, Rocky just going to Russia, like, oh. <laughs> Speaking of Rocky, what do you do? You watch anything like the night before your fight when you're chilling in the hotel? Do you do you have like a, a, a yeah? Sometimes you like those movies like Braveheart or yeah. freaking Gladiator or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, kind yeah. of bring you like oh yeah, I'm gonna pop up, pop up. But you know, you don't watch the Notebook or anything like that. Notebook, <laughs> Office Space. <laughs> the Notebook is like the chick, the most chick flick thing. Actually, I was that. watching Notebook before you one did? fight. I've never even seen the Notebook. <laughs> no, come on. I've never. Dude, I told you I'm not really like a chick flick. It was like a Kevin Costner. Costner again. Uh, no, Costner. that was that's the no, book. no the Notebook was was uh, okay. Ni the Nicholas Sparks movie that, that based on the book a couple years ago. I think it was like Ryan Gosling or something like that. Uh, You're no, thinking book. of a different one. A bottle with uh, the, the message in a bottle. Message, message in a bottle. Yeah, I was thinking of that. <laughs> Called up with Stella watching a little Kevin Costner. That's great. Look at that. We got you to blush. I like it. But um, but it's always a pleasure. You know, I think when 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 the fight was uh, was signed with you and Ryan, I was psyched because yeah, like we we're seeing, it's, it's stylistically, I think it's going to be good. I mean, I know, you know, people talk about like, oh, we're going to go and fireworks are going to go, but I really do think that you guys will have a good fight. Yeah, why not? That's what, yeah. you, what we work for. That's what you're here for. <laughs> well, thanks for letting us in your home again, and I, uh, I see that the. The BB guns uh, are <laughs> oh, mark still on the there. <laughs> still there. Like I said, folks, you guys have to look up the clip with Vlad and his guns, and uh, it was a really great day. But um, but again, thanks thanks for your time, and, and best of luck to you in your fight. Thank you. Thanks for watching, you guys. <laughs>